Well, first up on the show, in what could be seen as a major potential escalation in maritime attacks, Yemen's Houthi rebels have struck multiple commercial ships in the region, highlighting the dangers to one of the world's key shipping routes. A U.S. warship shot down three drones during the hours-long assault. The Iranian-backed Houthis claim two of these attacks. These strikes mark an escalation in a series of maritime attacks in West Asia, attacks that are not isolated but a reaction to the Israel-Hamas war. So how did it start? Well, it started at 9.15 a.m. local time. The U.S. Navy destroyer, the USS Kani, detected a ballistic missile. It was fired from the direction of Houthi-controlled areas. It hit close to one of the vessels. Shortly after, the U.S. warship shot down. A drone headed its way. Although it's not clear if the destroyer was the target. About 30 minutes later, the American vessel was hit by a missile. And while responding to its distress call, the USS Kearney shot down another incoming drone. Two other commercial ships also reported significant damage. While sailing to assist, one of these vessels, the U.S. Navy ship, destroyed another drone headed towards it. In total, the U.S. Navy destroyer downed three drones in the Red Sea. But this is not the first time the American warship has shot down rockets fired by the Houthis. So why are the Houthis attacking ships here? They say that their aim is to prevent the Israeli ships from navigating the Red Sea in order for them to stop attacking Gaza. But in the name of targeting Israeli ships, the Houthis have been targeting commercial ships as well. Impacting global shipping. If anything, the Red Sea tensions are an indication that the war in Gaza could still become a wider regional conflict. In Gaza, the truce is all but over. Israel has expanded its fighting to southern Gaza and ordered swaths of people to leave the Gaza Strip and move deeper into uh, the strip towards Rafah. Hospitals like this one have been bombed again. Israeli military has encircled Khan Yunus and told Gazans to head to the Rafah border near Egypt. Hundreds are dead and injured once again. From north to south, nowhere is safe in Gaza. At least 700 Palestinians have been killed in just 24 hours. It is one of the highest daily death tolls since the war began. For a second day, the Israeli military has targeted the Jabalia refugee camp. Several homes were destroyed. Dozens were killed. More are buried under the rubble. Israel has warned residents in southern Gaza to evacuate. But roads leading to other parts of the city or further south have been completely destroyed. But has this uh, really stopped Israel? And what has happened in the last couple of days? They've been asked to evacuate uh, further south. And as it widens the bombardment of Gaza Strip. On Monday, the Israeli military de declared via social media platform X that it was uh, defining safe areas for Gaza civilians. However, it is unclear whether Gazans received this message as internet and communication lines are down. Intense air raids overnight have killed more than 100 Palestinians. Israel has also stepped up attacks on the city of Khan Yunis, located in the south and was previously designated as a safe area. So while the Israeli forces chalk up battle plans for the southern part of Gaza Strip, the reality is that there is no safe place in Gaza. But as the conflict extends beyond Gaza, its ramifications have spread far beyond the battleground. While polls show Netanyahu's own personal rankings have remained low throughout this war and possibly even beyond it, its staunchest ally, America, is also under attack. President Biden is facing heat from local communities. Uh, so, uh, well, with a, ro a growing rally of Out with Biden campaign for supporting Israel's attacks on Gaza. His administration is under fire for funding and supporting actions deemed as murder of uh, Palestinians at the hands of Israeli forces. This criticism has sparked daily demonstrations, protests and calls on the Biden administration to exert pressure on Israel. Now, with the U.S. presidential elections a year away, Biden's position on the war may potentially jeopardize his chances of retaining the presidency. Over the weekend, 
Muslim American leaders in several pivotal states declared their intention to mobilize their communities against Biden's re-election bid. Abandoned Biden campaign gained traction initially with Minnesota Muslim Americans. Since then, it has expanded to states such as Michigan, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Florida. These states are significant swing states that could play a decisive role in determining the next leader of the nation. What's worse, on Saturday, the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris took an opposing stand from Biden when she said too many innocent Palestinians have been killed, calling for restraint. And according to opinion polls, most Americans back an end to Israel's war in the besieged Gaza Strip. It remains to be seen whether Muslim voters would turn against Biden en masse. But small shifts in support could make a difference in states Biden won by narrow margins in 2020. And well now, are you good at charming people? How long does it take you to woo a potential partner? If you can flirt like a pro, then you may have some serious riz. Yes, R-I-Z-Z. -Z. Riz. Chances are this word might not have existed for you if you're not Gen Z. But the Oxford University Press has named it the word of the year. So what is Riz? Where does it come from? And do you have any? Well, the word Riz comes from charisma. It is an internet slang for romantic appeal or charm. And according to Oxford English Dictionary, it means style, charm or attractiveness. It is your ability to attract a romantic partner. Now this year, Riz was used massively online. It was all over the social media. On TikTok, hashtag Riz garnered billions of views. As creative as ever, influencers and content creators posted thousands of reels and memes of Riz. Riz had many genres. There was the physical Riz, the academic Riz, the unspoken Riz. And after a certain point, anything that helped someone boo a partner became a type of Riz. Rizzing someone up became a trend so how did Riz end up becoming the word of the year? It was one of the eight words on a short list. All of these words were chosen uh, to reflect the mood, ethos or preoccupations of 2023. The list was narrowed down in a public vote. Ultimately, Oxford made the final decision. But Riz had some serious competition from other words as well used this year. Now there were beige flags, Swifty, situation ship as well now if you're gen z you probably already know but for others let me tell you what these words mean while red and green flags are famously known beige flag was a new addition it defines a character trait or a habit perhaps which indicates that a partner is boring just like the color beige let me give you some examples for one person. Their partner's beige flag was always uh, asking someone their astrological sign uh, when meeting for the first time. For another one, it was their partner uh, while making silly shooting noises when watching action scenes in a movie. You see, beige flag is neither good nor bad. It just lacks originality. Another word that went viral was Swifty. Now this one has been around for a decade if not more. All the Taylor Swift fans uh, proudly call themselves Swifties. But this year with Taylor Swift's uh, era tour going strong, the word Swifty was used with unparalleled enthusiasm. Which reminds me of another word that went viral. It's parasocial. It is a one-sided relationship that fans often share with public figures. It's a sense of intimacy that a viewer, a follower, or a fan comes to feel for a celebrity to the point that they start considering themselves to be a friend. From what we could see on social media, a lot of Swifties had a parasocial relationship with Taylor Swift. After all, she has the music riz going on for her. Then there was the de-influencing. While influencing is a full-blown occupation, of course, now de-influencing is something new and unheard of. But simply, it is the opposite of influencing. 
de-influencers on social media discourage people from buying particular products. They promote reducing consumption of material goods. This was probably one of the few positive trends on social media this year. We also had a good old situation ship on the list. It's a romantic or sexual relationship that is not considered to be formal. It needs to be established and you would need Riz for that certainly. Well now on to a story of nature's fury. Dozens of towns in Indonesia have been blanketed in ash. 11 hikers have been found dead near the Mount Merapi volcano. 12 others are missing. Indonesia sits on the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire and Merapi is one of the most active of the 127 volcanoes in Indonesia. Take a look at our next report. Mount Marapi, an active volcano in West Sumatra province, violently erupted yesterday, sending plumes of ash and volcanic debris over three kilometers into the air. This sudden volcanic eruption has resulted in tragic loss of life and widespread panic. At least 11 climbers have lost their lives so far. The bodies of these hikers were recovered earlier today, along with three climbers who were successfully rescued. Meanwhile, 12 remain missing. Roughly 75 hikers were climbing to the 9,480-foot mountain when the volcano erupted, of which at least 49 have been safely evacuated. All of the climbers had registered at two command posts, or online, through West Sumatra's conservation agency before they went ahead with the climb. <laughs> According to reports, search and rescue efforts have been hampered by continued volcanic activity in the area, forcing authorities to suspend operations temporarily for safety reasons. However, other reports indicate that the operations are underway. 160 rescuers are working to locate the 12 missing climbers. Their safety and evacuation remains a top priority for the rescuers. Eight climbers were rescued yesterday, while three more were saved today. They were rushed to hospitals to be treated for burns. One of the climbers even had a broken limb. The survivors are being treated at two hospitals in Padang Panjang and Bukit Tinggi. Social media visuals showed the hikers with their faces smeared with volcanic dust and rain. This disaster also highlights a disturbing pattern of recklessness, despite being on high alert since 2011, with strict instructions prohibiting climbers within three kilometers of the peak Many chose to defy these orders, often venturing too close to the crater. This regard for guidelines indicate a lack of caution turned what might have been a routine climb into a deadly ordeal. As of now, two climbing routes have been closed by the authorities. But it is not just the climbers who are facing the brunt of this volcanic eruption. The eruption has also had a major impact on nearby villages like Rubai and Goba Kumantiang. At least 1400 people live on the slopes of Marapi. The nearest villages are merely 5 to 6 kilometers away from the peak. And these communities have been covered in ash. Authorities have distributed masks and urged residents to wear eye protection against the volcanic ash. Marapi's recent volcanic activity is being seen as part of a larger trend. The volcano has erupted regularly since 2004, with eruptions happening every two to four years. These eruptions, often sudden and difficult to detect due to the shallow source, but continue to pose a continual threat to the region. Indonesia, located on the Pacific Ring of Fire, is home to more than 120 active volcanoes. The Ring of Fire is an arc of volcanoes and fault lines encircling the Pacific Basin. This geological reality makes the country particularly vulnerable to seismic challenges. This highlights the need for constant vigilance and respect for guidelines, 
As of now, the loved ones of those missing are waiting for any news of their survival.